Week 10 of college football. Let's start in Austin. Number 25, Kansas State. Well, I guess these rankings have changed, right, since the CFP, uh, the initial CFP rankings came out. But we've got Kansas State at Texas. Number 23, Kansas State at number 7, Texas. This game will be 11 a.m. on Fox. Currently, Texas is a four-point favorite. Massive game when it comes to who will play in the Big 12 championship game. It's all about the quarterback spot, right? Well, the quarterbacks spots, yeah. Uh, we got we got multiple guys playing for Kansas State, and yeah, Malik Murphy, which you know you would expect as a backup that he's going to be behind, you know, running that offense. Just the efficiency, the smoothness, operation, all of that stuff. He's not on the level of yours, and you wouldn't expect him to be. But he's going to be better. I would guess than he was last week and there's going to be some improvement as he gets more reps and more practice time, but plain and simple to me, Kansas state is not the 23rd best team in the country. And Texas is not the seventh. Um, Kansas state is way better than that. And Texas without Quinn Ewers and what we've seen from Lake Murphy, at least as up to this point, they're not the number seven team in the country. So um, I, in my opinion, Kansas State, like this, it all plays right into Kansas State's hands, um, in my opinion. The way they run their offense, I think it's going to keep Malik Murphy out of rhythm, keep that Texas offense out of rhythm. And, and clearly Kansas State is tough and physical on defense, and, and they can make some plays. But it's all about what they do on offense. Um, they've, they've found the right formula with Howard and Johnson, and I just – I, I I think Texas has the ability to make some big plays in this game offensively with Worthy and obviously, um, you know, Sanders at tight end and, and they've got the running game going with Jonathan Brooks. I just don't think it's going to be enough. And I don't think they're going to be able to find those big plays, at least in the passing game, with enough consistency to win the game. I know this. Malik Murphy cannot make the mistakes he made against BYU and Texas win this football game. He he has to play efficiently. And I don't think there's any doubt that Texas will lean on that offensive line and on that run game, like you mentioned, with Jonathan Brooks. But Murphy's going to have to make some throws in this game. I mean, that's, just, that's just what – I don't know if it's going to decide the game, but he's got to be better than he was against BYU and – that's why the number one situation I'm looking at in this game is the red zone. Kansas State's defense, they've got one of the best red zone defenses in all of college football. They're really good in that area of the field. And Texas has struggled in that area of the field, especially along the goal line. Yep. And that was with yours. Can Murphy be precise in that area of the field? I, I don't know. I am excited to watch the two-headed quarterback monster of K-State go to work in this game. Dylan Gabriel, go back and think about that game in the Cotton Bowl. Dylan Gabriel had success with his, with his legs. Uh, Avery Johnson has real speed. And Will Howard's been looking more mobile lately. Mm -hmm. So will Texas' defense be able to limit what those guys can do with their legs? I don't think Kansas State has the wide receivers to run by guys for Texas, but they do have Ben Sennett. He's got to have he's got to have a massive game at the tight end position for them. And how about the tight end matchup in this game? Jatavion Sanders and Ben Sennett, that's yeah. that's pretty dang good, but you know where my eyes are ultimately going to be at. That K-State O-line versus that Texas D-line, yep. that's going to be awesome. It is. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be great. And, you know, K-State, uh, if I were them, and I know they've they've got some of this stuff in their package, it's, it's 
they're going to be able to neutralize that defensive line a bit with the quarterback run game. It's way easier to gain the edge and and work the edges of the defense and kind of get away from the teeth of, of what Texas does there at the inside backer and, and interior defensive line spot. But I, it's going to be, it's going to be a good game. I, I don't know if you see it differently. I just, I can't, if, if we get the best of both, I don't, I don't see how Texas can, can match up to case. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If we get the best of both Texas wins. Cause they have a much more talented football team. Well, if you get the best version of Malik Murphy and the best version of Texas, they win the game. They're at I home. Don't even they have know more talent. The, I don't know what the best version of Malik Murphy is. Uh, well, I would assume the best version of him is throwing accurate deep balls to Xavier Worthy and Adonai Mitchell. Like, they have a more talented football team. Kansas State's got to take them into the deep water, and Texas has to make a few mistakes. Kansas State, this shocked me, Ted. K-State has lost six in a row to Texas. Yeah. It is, uh, that is, what's so strange about it is like the way that Kansas State typically plays and they have some massive up and down years. Like there's some years where, and usually there's some, there's like some big swings within a year where they look like they're going to be horrible and they turn out to be great. And then there's other years where it's like they're, you know, it's the exact opposite. Um, It's surprising that they haven't been able to, to get Texas into their uh, into their style of play or, or take them into deep water. I don't know. I, and maybe, maybe I just have a blind spot here, but from, from like what I saw with Texas, with my own eyes with us and now without Quinn Ewers, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. No, I, no, I, I think Kansas state wins the game by, two scores or more. Yeah, I don't think that. I think K-State, I'm, I think K-State's more than capable of going and winning, but six in a row in Austin? I, What's the best I have Texas a, we've seen? Bama. Other than that one game, have what I haven't seen I, – I've seen an okay football team from yeah, Texas. But the same thing can be said. But the best version of Kansas State is not better than the best version of Texas. I mean, it's not close, yeah. man. Come on. They got first-rounders on both sides of the ball. Like, come on. Kansas State doesn't have those guys. No. Kansas State, it's toughness. It's – now – well, yeah, but the that's offense their is version. fun now. I mean, they're, that's their version, though. Like, their best version isn't a, you know, they're throwing it all over the – that's like their best version just looks different, you know? Well, Texas has one of the leading rushers in the country. I mean, it's not like Texas is just some chuck-it-all-over-the-yard team. So, I well, I can't believe I'm Alabama. defending Texas here, but they I were, think that's it's going to be a great That's what they were against game. Alabama, though. At their best, that's what they were. And now they've like yeah, but you can't compare what Alabama has on defense to what K State's got on defense. That's just not a, that's not a comparison. Alabama may be the best I'm defense not, in the country. I'm not comparing that. I'm. I I don't I don't know. I just I I think it's a bad matchup for Texas. I would take the points with Kansas State. I think it's insane. You think K State's going to go in there and win by two scores? But I could see them going in there and winning the game. Close. Real close. Yeah. I I guess it's it's hard to predict what what Texas team shows up. I mean, maybe that's that's what it is. I, I've and I've they are a team that plays down to their competition somewhat, so they're not gonna be feeling that way in this game. This is clearly a big one, so maybe they rise up to the challenge. Um I hey, I'm 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 perfectly fine being wrong. It's just how I just, I don't know. I I, think we both think that Kansas state's playing really good football right now. I think we can agree on that. Yes. Yep. For sure. They will, uh, they will have the Longhorns attention. That's for sure. Now can Malik Murphy make the plays he needs to make for them to win that game. I think that's what it comes down to. 
We'll see. Yeah. They, Can he execute they, in the red zone? They can't beat K State if if Sanders and Worthy don't get going. If they can't get those guys going, they can't win the game. Completely agree. All right, the next game, Missouri at Georgia. Big one in the SEC. This will be 2.30 on CBS. Currently, Georgia is a 15-and-a-half-point favorite. This is number 12, Missouri, at number two, Georgia. Missouri gave the dogs all they wanted last season. And it's interesting because Missouri is a better football team this year than they were a year ago. And Georgia's probably a little worse than they were a year ago. Still very, very good. Missouri having a really solid season under Eli Drinkowitz. Luther Burden has been one of the best players in all of college football. Uh, Brady Cook has done some really good things at the quarterback position. Uh, with all that being said, I think they're walking into a buzzsaw in Athens. Instead, I think they're going to get destroyed. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I think that, and, you know, we talked about this early on. Georgia has, you know, was kind of sleepwalking early in the year. There wasn't really much to get their attention on their schedule. They've had a couple of games that have been like, okay, here we go. And when those games have come around, it's been a different Georgia team that has shown up. And I think that's probably what you're going to get with this. Like this Missouri team has has played good enough this year to, you know, to be able to get the attention of Georgia. And they just they don't have the horses. Now, as good as Luther Burden is, I you can't count them out that he can like they can be destroyed the entire day except oh. for five or six plays and he just goes off and keeps him in it you know oh i i'm counting him out because i know this kirby smart's gonna make anyone else beat him yeah he's gonna make anyone yeah. else make the plays he's a tremendous game planner you'll take your chances with theo weiss who by the way having a solid year yeah doing a good job for them but you're you're gonna take your chances with weiss and mookie cooper you you eliminate Luther Burden from the game with the way that you game plan against Missouri. I, that's what I expect Kirby Smart to do. So the other guys from Missouri, and their run game has really gotten going, but the other guys from Missouri, they're going to have to make the plays because I feel like Kirby Smart and that staff, they're, they're going to have a plan for Burden. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing, it's that's just kind of the nature of how things are not you just don't hear very much about Georgia's offense but their offense is really good Beck has been you know really solid for them got great wide outs I uh, I know their defense is incredible and it is and it deserves all the recognition it gets but it allows that offense to kind of fly under the radar uh with a bunch of people like like they're just you know they're average they're good Beck's been great. He's been really efficient for him. So, yeah, I I don't know what the final score is, but I I like Georgia, and, and they could stretch it out pretty decently. Yeah, I just don't think Missouri's defense will be able to limit enough of the explosives from Georgia. And, and that's in the throw game with Carson Beck, but Dejon Edwards has done a really nice job, and that rushing attack has found a nice rhythm. Also, I just, when you look at the vibes of the two coaches, I feel like Kirby Smart just wants to blow them off the field and then call Drinkwitz a nerd, like stuff them in a locker. That's just the vibe I'm getting from this game. I yeah. just, that's just how I feel heading into it. Drinkwitz, in a weird way, is, I, he's like the annoying little brother. So I don't know. There's there's something about the way that he he handles it that I could see it getting under some people's skin. And but he put together a way better football team than I thought they were going to have this year. There's no doubt about that. And you know he was he was on the hot seat coming into the season, and they're off to one of the best starts that they've had in a while. So credit credit what he's done. No doubt about it. All right, last game. Number 14, LSU, heading to number eight, Alabama. Game will be 645 on CBS. Alabama currently a three-point favorite. 
big one in the SEC West. And when you break this game down, you think about, hey, what's going to be exciting to watch? Strength on strength in this one. That Bama defense that may be the, be the best in the country against that LSU offense that may be the best in the country with the way that Jaden Daniels is playing. That's the game, in my opinion. I, I think we haven't really seen anyone be able to slow down that LSU offense, but Bama's defense in Tuscaloosa, this could be the day where we see Jaden Daniels and that wide receiver core not find as much success. I know, and it's interesting to think about because LSU has an awesome offense. Bama has a great defense. And those two are going to clash. It's, it, you know, you expect LSU to put some points up, but you also expect Bama's defense to be able to, to do a good job. It's really probably going to come down to, does the LSU defense or Alabama offense play better? You know, I, I expect the, the, the good units for each team to kind of do their thing. It's, what other what other uh, side of the ball is going to be able to put together a good game? If Alabama's offense can be sharp, not turn it over, be explosive in the deep ball game, which feels like it's probably the best part of their offense, like if they can hit on that stuff, they probably win the game. If LSU's defense can find a way to to bother Milrow force a couple of big turnovers, maybe a sack fumble, maybe a pick six, something like that, they probably win the game. You know, it's you you're gonna get what you get from the star units. It's it's what can the uh the other guys do. Yeah, I think Bama's the more balanced team and they're yeah. at home. And LSU is going to be missing pieces of a secondary that hasn't been good. They're gonna be de- digging deeper, even deeper into the depth chart. So can Jalen Milrow exploit that? Uh, can Burden, Burton and Bond make some big explosive plays in the passing game? I think they can. Ultimately, I think Alabama wins this football game. And LSU's, if they want to win the West, right, they've already lost to Ole Miss. They absolutely have to have this one. And I just don't know if Jaden Daniels and that offense, right, with with neighbors and Thomas and Lacey and all those guys at wide receiver, I just don't know if they are able to be so good to where the deficiencies on LSU's defense don't matter in this one. Like, can they just go out there and have an all-time performance? I find that hard to believe against that Bama defense in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. Because uh, Alabama's offense has gotten all kinds of criticism this year, rightfully so, but they've gotten incrementally better week by week by week, and they've found a nice little rhythm. I think they've learned to build on Milrow's uh, strengths and try to help their offensive line out a little bit. They're not, they're not as bad as what they were against South Florida, and I think maybe like whenever you go out and you play bad early in the year, it's hard for people to see you differently than, than what you were at that point. And they've gotten better. They're going to find some plays and they're going to score some points against LSU. There there's not only a lot on the line when it comes to the sec title race in this one, some Heisman implications that award, we've talked about it a little bit. That awards up in the air. If Jaden Daniels can go into Tuscaloosa, have a tremendous performance, all of a sudden, he is, he's really in the mix for the Heisman Trophy. And how about this stat? And our buddy Brett McMurphy put it out there. Jaden Daniels is trying to become the first starting quarterback to beat Nick Saban in consecutive seasons since Drew Brees did it at Purdue in 1998 and 1999 when Saban was at Michigan State. That Crazy. blew my mind. Crazy. Yeah, that's wild. That's what happens when you hardly ever lose games. You <laughs> yeah, know, no you know, I never beat you back to back. <laughs> so we'll see if Jaden Daniels is in fact that dude. We'll see. 
I, I think it's gonna be a great game. It's like the stat like Coach Stoops never lost a game after the OU Texas game. It's like, yeah, that's what happens whenever you average one loss a year. Uh you know, for pretty much your time. that's that's an incredible stat though. I but you know, I don't know how many guy like guys like Jane Daniels, they face back to back in the West, you know? There hadn't been a whole lot of of those type of guys in the West of the of the SEC over that long period. Been a handful of guys, but Manziel almost did it. Almost. Almost. 